driving my Ferrari Testarossa. Oh boy, I love this game called Outrun. This was developed in 1985. And, oh, oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, this, this car handles great. Top down. Got my goal by the side of me. Oh, I love this game. Awesome. Awesome. Now, you know what? If only I could see one of these cars featured in this video game. Maybe even touch one. Maybe even sit in one. Maybe even drive one. But you know, one can only dream. And we've got something very special for you today. And you know what? They say don't meet your icons or heroes. Well, in this case, uh, I'm going to meet one of my heroes and icons. And as you can see, it's a Ferrari Testarossa. That's right. And I had one of these growing up as a little kid, a poster on my bedroom wall. And today, I get to meet that picture in the poster. Isn't it gorgeous? Looks like the Batmobile, doesn't it? It's just absolutely gorgeous, this is. And uh, a little thing about this is when I was going back up in the 80s, when I was growing up in the 80s, there was this video game called Outrun. You remember that game, Outrun? And uh, Outrun had actually a Ferrari Testarossa in it. And that's how I got to know this car, was based upon that video game. And actually, interesting fact is in the video game, it is shown as a convertible. But did they make a convertible? No, 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 no. They couldn't figure out the engineering and all that for that. So, but actually they did make one convertible. And I think it was in 1985 is when they made that convertible. And um, it was for the uh, chairman of Fiat, I think. It was like a customized version of it. But uh, Freud never made an official convertible for it. But that's what's featured in Outrun. And that's how I know about this car. And where else do I know this car from? It's a TV show. Yes, Don Johnson, Miami Vice. Yes, and what color was it? It was white. Now this is black, but still, this is the Miami Vice car. Another interesting fact is that in the TV show Miami Vice, this was not the first car. In fact, it was the second car used in the show because the original car was a Ferrari Spider. Yes, the Ferrari Spider, Daytona Spider, in fact, and it was. It was actually black, like this. But um, was it a real Ferrari? No. Remember, everything you see on the movies is fake, you know, to make it look real. And that's exactly what this car was, because you know what car that was? It was actually a Corvette dressed up like a Daytona, Ferrari Daytona Spider. Can you believe that? And, um, and so the story goes is that Enzo Ferrari was a huge fan of Miami Vice and uh, he wasn't too happy about them using a fake Ferrari. You know, he's got a kind of an ego, Enzo does, you know, and uh, he said, I can't believe they're using a fake Ferrari in my, in my show and it's actually a Corvette, you know. And uh, so he made them blow up the car on the actual television show. Yeah, the whole car went kaboom. So he blew up the Corvette that was dressed like a Ferrari and he said, hey, look, I'm going to give you like two or three new Ferrari Testarossas, which we were producing at the time. And then that's how they got the Ferrari Testarossa, because Enzo Ferrari wanted one of his actual cars in the TV show. But also, movies are also fake, too, because for the stunts and for the speed chases, they actually didn't use the Ferrari Testarossa because it was a little bit too much money for them. So what they actually used 
was a, um, a Ford Dimitar, I think it's a Ford uh, Pantera with uh, a Ferrari Testarossa body kit on it for like all the stunts. Um, and another reason to use that is pretty much when this car's going really fast, and then it does kind of like a side spin like that. These actually have a tendency to actually cut out, the motor does, and uh, where the, uh, the Pantera doesn't. Uh, so they use the Pantera as a stunt double. So yes, you had the beautiful actor or actress, this Ferrari Testarossa, and then you had a stunt double doing all the stunts for it. So interesting fact, these cars here, the Ferrari Testarossa, they were actually made between the years of 1985 and 1991. And after 1991, they actually continued, but under some different prefixes like the M, which is for modifications. So I think about 1996. And all in all, there was about 10,000 of these actually made. So it is one of Ferrari's uh, most sold car in, in the world. The other being the 308 was also the other one that was very commercialized and for the streets too. Uh, but this was second to that. And 10,000 units for Ferrari, that was a lot, okay? And this particular Ferrari is a 1990. And I absolutely love it. I think it's the perfect year. And so welcome to episode number two, number two of the car series, where we get to look at the cars and interview the owners. Let's get on with the show. So why the name? Why is it called a Ferrari Testarossa? Well, believe it or not, Testarossa stands for red-headed. Red-headed. So, as you can see, it's, it, it's a red Ferrari Testarossa, red-headed. Um, oh, wait, hold on, hold, hold on. It's not red, it's black. So, I don't think we can call it Ferrari Testarossa. Maybe we'll have to call it a Ferrari Nera, because that is a name for black-headed car. So, uh, might have to change the name of this particular one, but still, they call them all a Ferrari Testarossa, which means red-headed. Interesting. I think so. I'm, I'm, I've got brown hair. I've got brown hair. That's what I've got. But this has got a nice black look to it. And the black is what makes this car. It's my favorite color on the Testarossa. Normally I would say, heck, if you get a Ferrari, you've got to get red, right? You've got to get red with tan interior. But on this car, this car can break the rules. I don't know why, it just, it, it doesn't need to be red. It actually looks better in other colors. And my favorite color is this black. And also I like the white one, like in Miami Vice. But absolutely love the lines and everything on this car. And the black. Just, just look at the way the black shines from the sunlight coming down here along the curves of this car. It's just, it's, 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 a, it's a piece of sculpture, this car. So what we like to do in these videos is compare these cars to a style of architecture. And uh, this car is from the 1980s. It's very flamboyant with its curves, its grill. It's just, makes a statement unlike the bubble cars of today they all look the same when you see one of these cars next to the newer cars these really do stand out and they're still very flamboyant and so i was thinking about what kind of architecture represents this car and so i was thinking about it and i was thinking about the flamboyant architecture of the late gothic period back in the 13th to 16th century of the renaissance period and uh, what that style was famous for was its tracery. I mean, tracery is like a form of decorative paneling and, and that's what you've got here with this air intake, with these uh, lines here, this tracery. And then you've also got double curves, which is very prominent in that style architecture. You've got the double curves over the wheel wells here. And then also the free forms, just the free forms of like the Gothic arches and things like this. And you've got the free forms that go from the front to the rear of the car. So late Gothic style architecture, the Ferrari Testarossa, I think that's a good match. Interesting story. So how was this car, how did it come into being? Well, the story goes that this is uh, actually a car based upon a famous Ferrari racing car. I think it was a 250 Ferrari Testarossa. Oh, does the name sound familiar? That's ah, because this is a Ferrari Testarossa. Yes, it was actually named after that car. And it actually 
has some race car features because Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari, wanted to have a car that's in production that mimicked the racing cars of the time. Therefore we have these side intakes, which is very common in the race cars that were racing at the time for Ferrari. And uh, this car, the predecessor of this car, was called a, uh, a Ferrari uh, Boxster. It was a Ferrari Boxster, a Belinta Boxster. I always forget that, Belinta Boxster. And uh, this is a result of taking the Belinta Boxster and fixing everything that was wrong with that car. And one of the things that was wrong with that car was the cabin overheated. Yeah, that's right, the cabin overheated. And uh, so that's the reason, and why did it overheat? Because it had a radiator up at the front. Well, this car does not have that. This car has two radiators, and they radiators are mounted towards the engine on each side. And that's why you have these air intakes right here, pulling it in through the radiator, and then through the engine, and then out. So it didn't get the cabin hot. So there's uh, how this, how, this, this is how, the, I said house, because I'm an architect, right? But this is how this car came into being, because of those very reasons. This is my absolute favorite part of the car, the rear of the car. I just love this grille. I love how wide it is. And uh, it's actually not as wide as some of the cars today. <laughs> yeah, back in the day it was wide, but not today. But anyway, this is my favorite part. So what's a better time to introduce the owner of this car, of this black beauty here? And um, let's see if we can find him. Rory, where are you? Rory? Rory? Ro hey, hey, Rory, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh no, not meet you. We've now, we, we met, we met <laughs> at a right. car show recently. That's right. Anyway, he's become a good friend, Rory. Absolutely. And uh, Rory, so tell me about your car. I mean, how did you come about uh, finding this, uh, this beauty? And uh, why did you buy it? Um, what was your what was your reasons for all that? Well, I've always been a car fan, and uh, my dream car was the Ferrari Testarossa. Like you, I had a poster in my room, yes. uh, and you know, Hot Wheels, etc. So, yeah. uh, I had an opportunity to purchase this car from a collector uh, that actually owned eighty five cars in his collection. eighty five cars in his collection. Yeah, so he, he wouldn't miss one, right? But maybe his best one, right? Right. He, he was paring them down, so I guess yeah. it just didn't make the cut. <laughs> uh, I was happy to take it off his hand. That's great. So how long have you had this car then? When did you actually buy the car? Uh, I've owned this car a little over a year. Just a year? Yeah. So you still got a lot more enjoyment. Absolutely. And you've got to keep this one in your collection because I know you've got other cars. That's right. But uh, just a thing of beauty, my friend. Just It's just awesome. So Rory, um, I know what some of my favorite features of the car is, you know. So what are some of your favorite features of the Testarossa? Well, what's not to love about the Testarossa, but I really love the rear, the rear of the car, uh, just the, the grates and the width of the car. It really looks like a spaceship. Um, yes, and, and, it does. Uh, it's such a futuristic looking car even today. Yes, it is. It, and it, you know, I never, I never thought about that. It does look like a spaceship from the back. It looks like Very one of those Star Destroyers from yep. Star Wars, right. right? Or something like that. Right. But I, I love the, the linear fins along the back here. And what's, what's behind this? Is it the, the, all the tail lights and, and all that kind of stuff, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, and then you've got the Ferrari emblem in the center right here. I mean, this has to be, don't you think, out of all the cars that I've seen and you've seen, has to be one of the best rears of any car Absolutely. I've ever seen. Yeah. And, best rear uh, in the business. I think I'm fascinated by rear ends. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, yeah. but in the last Same. video I was fascinated by rear ends. But I guess it's because anybody that follows you, because you know you're in a fast car, so everybody's going to be behind you, right? So you better have the rear looking good, right? And this probably has the best rear end in all of car production history. Absolutely. Don't you think? I agree. I mean, it beats Porsches, it beats Lamborghinis, it beats everything. So Rory, uh, something interesting about this uh, rear end of the car, uh, as compared to the Lamborghini Countach, as you know, what, what's different from the Lamborghini Countach and this? It's a giant spoiler, isn't it? Yeah. Well, but the Countach actually needed that spoiler just for the drag coefficient to kind of keep the back wheels planted on the ground. But this car here, this car did not need a spoiler. And it's actually the designers were intelligent enough uh, that they designed the car with the air intakes and how the air flowed through and how it's planted and the aerodynamics of this car where this car did not have to have a spoiler. So that's the difference between the Lamborghini Countach and the Ferrari Testarossa. So good job to the designers of this car. 
So we've got this grill here with the fins, but it's also hiding something. So it's also a practical application. And uh, what, what is behind this in the center? Because I see like a honeycomb yeah. and some silver components back there. Uh, what is that? Chris, that's the uh, dual exhaust that's wrapped uh, in the back of the engine. So that is actually covering these exhaust pipes, the dual exhaust right here, are actually coming up here and like, like twisting around in there yes. and then going to the engine because this is a mid-engine sports car. So the engine is right over here. So instead of them going straight, they still had to have some length, right, for the exhaust to kind of come through and then come on out. So what they did is they just, they just wrapped it around each other uh, behind this black grid here. I think that's a fascinating little fact Absolutely. there. Thanks for that. I did not know that. And, and here we go, I just can't get over this little horse, which is also black. Did you paint that black or was it silver? No, it came that way. It came black? The factory, yep. Oh, that's pretty awesome, it's yep. normally the silver. Right. So just, just, um, just once again, let's just take a look at this rear of this Ferrari right here. Just everything from the back window, these little side buttresses, which is also like an architectural feature of the Gothic architecture, like in churches, kind of buttresses right. here. And the buttresses just flow on here to the back. And then this nice super wide end with a tail light and the, the exhaust hidden here yeah. behind this wonderful grid, which is really the signature, isn't it? It's a signature of the of the Ferrari Testarossa. I mean, I yeah. can't think of another car that has a similar feature in history to this. I've seen grills at the front, but never a grill like this at the back. Right. Rory, so this car, or the design of this car on the outside at least, was designed by a famous coach company. A coach refers to the body of the car. You know, you got the chassis, then you got the coach. And uh, the coach designer on this was actually a company that's very famous in the Ferrari world. Yes, even the 308, the Boxster, and all the famous cars that you associate with Ferrari were designed by Panini Farina. That's right. And actually a guy that worked for Panini Farina was a guy called Leonardo DiCaprio. And he was the one that actually designed this car. A movie star. Can you believe that? What do you think? That's interesting. You got Leonardo DiCaprio designed your car. He did a great job. Actually it wasn't, but his name will appear right here. Right there, because I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's an interesting fact. So we keep referring to this feature right here. And uh, what is this feature called? You, you, you mentioned it to me. It was like a... Um, we call it the cheese grater. A cheese grater. You know, one of those things where you slice cheeses on. So you just get a big block of cheese and, you, and on this car, if you're hungry and you're in a picnic, get a big block of cheese and you can slice it on this cheese grater right here. Uh, not really. No, not really. Um, the interesting uh, thing is um, this was actually a result of uh, some um, countries restricting the big huge air intakes like you used to see in some cars right because a lot of cars had big huge intakes just big holes in the body and then the, the, some countries didn't like that we were always something interesting about this cheese grater was that it was actually a practical application as a result of some comp some well, not what company some countries uh, the regulations, they wouldn't allow the big, you remember the big huge yeah. air intakes of the older cars where there were just big holes? Well, they were worried about cyclists and pedestrians getting sucked up into them. A bit like that movie Death Race 2000 with David Carradine. Yeah. You know, where they used to mow down the, uh, the pedestrians yeah. and, and the cyclists and everything to gain points. Well, some countries apparently didn't like that. So uh, Ferrari had to add these fins along here so you didn't have as much distance so people's heads couldn't go into the intake see my head my head's too big it can't fit between these fins so that's why you've got this fin look and that's how it came about and in fact the uh, the Boxster car had a smaller version of this actually probably put just this big here but on the Testarossa they exaggerated it for look and I think this is what makes this car so side mirrors on the Ferrari Testarossa. There's an interesting story on these side mirrors right here. Actually, did you know the very first car, very first Testarossa, do you know what was different from the one you've got? Because you've got two side mirrors. But the very first couple of years that they did a Testarossa, do you know what the difference was? Yeah, it had a single mirror, a it, flying mirror. It had a flying mirror, that's right. It was like a flying mirror. And it was actually mounted actually on the body post right up here. So it actually came out like this. And there's actually a little bit of an interesting story about that. 
because originally the guy that was testing the Ferrari Testarossa when it was first designed, they actually had a smaller mirror on. It wasn't a flying mirror. It was just like a smaller mirror attached and I think it was lower down. And the story goes, and I actually heard this on Ferrari chat, so call out to Ferrari chat here, um, is that the guy that was driving the car, you know, the guy that was testing the car, taking it for a spin, actually mowed down a cyclist because he couldn't see anything behind him at all with a smaller side mirror, wow. you know? And so the solution for it was the flying side mirror, the flying mirror mounted up high. And then that way the driver can actually see what's behind and above the car. That's why the mirror was mounted as high as it was. That's interesting. So that's just a little story. And I thought I read that and I said, that's just a cool little story that. And that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. But in later years, they did make it a little bit more safer. They, they put the side mirrors in the correct place where they can still see past the car. But the difference is they had the two mirrors. So they didn't have to have the flying mirror right. that kind of covered the whole car. They had two, a mirror on the other side, just like any other regular car. Why didn't I think of that before? But the flying mirror cars are actually extremely valuable today. Well, Roy, I want to see what's under the hood. I want to see this engine in this car. Let's do it. So to do that, I guess we've got to open up the door, right? So, um, I don't see a door handle. I see a, I see a, a key, face for a key, but there's no, there's no handle. There's, there's Here, no let, me see, let me show what? you there. It's hidden. Oh, wow. That is awesome. So why did they do that? So they maintain the lines. So they maintain the lines. Now that's Ferrari thinking right there. So it's going to be harder for you to get in. But if you know how to get in, it's easy. So there's probably less of these stolen than Honda Accords, right? I would think so. Because if I'm to steal this car, I'm like, crap, where's the handle? Where's the handle? Oh, 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 here's the handle. There it is. Love that about these 1980s Ferraris. The handles are incorporated into the design. That's really cool. Beautiful. So now, let's pop the trunk and let's check out the engine. Let's do it. So this is for the engine compartment and this is for the front bonnet. Rory, thanks for opening up the trunk of this car and exposing the power plant of the Ferrari Testarossa. And as you can see, there's a mid-engined sports car. Okay, so the engine's not in the front. It's not in the bonnet, it's in the trunk. Yes, and it's as close to the cabin as possible. And uh, this particular engine is interesting because uh, you know I was saying that Enzo Ferrari, uh, he wanted to emulate the racing cars of the time, right? And then this particular engine, they actually did use in some of their Formula One cars of the 1980s. And this particular engine is called the Flat 12, okay? Which means it's kind of mounted flat-wise as opposed to, well, the other direction, vertical, right? Uh, and then it had six cylinders on one side and six cylinders on the other side separated by the camshaft right here, which allowed it more power. And each cylinder actually had how many valves? Two. You know? Four valves. Four. It has yeah, four quite, valves, quite, yeah. and that's called a quattro valve. Uh, quattro valve. Um, and a lot of Ferraris of the 1980s had four valves, which makes for about 48 valves <laughs> on this engine. So this engine was fine-tuned for racing. So how many horsepower is this beauty? It's 390, Chris. 390 horsepower. And some of you are going, well, that's not a lot of horsepower. The cars of today, they have a. Uh, 500 to 1,000 horsepower these supercars of today. Well, remember, this was back in 1980, and 390 horsepower was quite a lot of horses, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. So zero to 60, how much is zero to 60? 5.3 seconds. 5.3 seconds, once again, super fast for a car back in 1980s. Blew away everything. I think that might even be faster than the Lamborghini Countach off the start line. Um, but I know some cars today are faster than that, like these little electric boxes, like the Tesla got like two seconds. But this was before electric power and everything. This is a real power plant. And uh, that was very fast. And uh, what was the top speed of this car? 180. 180. So 180 and uh, what was the Countach? Was it 185? I think so. So this was like the second fastest production car in the 1980s. And um, that's quite a feat that Ferrari achieved. It's amazing. So I think Enzo Ferrari achieved his goal of creating a race car for the streets. Just love it. 
Another little interesting fact is on the Fry Testarossa, I painted these cam covers red. And that's also what the name refers to, Fry Testarossa, Rosa being red. And they've got these nice, beautiful red cam covers, which just, just make this engine stand out. And I love the way it, these cylinders are separated, like we talked about earlier, six on each side, separated by the camshaft in the middle. It just looks awesome. And you see all these headers coming out here. Um, just the, it's a thing of beauty. Also the red color just below here of the actual engine block right here. Just everything about it, Testarossa, Rosa, being red. That's right. So they incorporated a lot of the name, Red Rosa, into the design of the engine. So earlier we talked about those cheese graters on the side, which was the air intake. Well, that sucks in the air on the side of the car through those egg or cheese graters. And then these are the radiators here. So instead of having one radiator at the front, we have actually got two radiators, one on each side. And here you can see one of the side radiators. So the air comes into these radiators, avoids heating up the cabin and comes straight into the engine. And then the air then flows out of all these vents and then these rear vents here of the car. So it's just a big nice stream of air just continuing through the car and avoiding the cabin. So the passengers don't get hot, which I think is good on those hot summer days in Florida, right? Because that's what these are designed for. Florida, hot Florida days. The hood is open and it's revealing, oh my God, I cannot believe this. There's actually a place to store groceries, to go grocery shopping. You know, an interesting fact is that Belinta Boxster, the car before this, actually had absolutely zero storage space for luggage, groceries, or for anything. And so, because this was kind of fixed the problems of the Belinta, Boxster, they decided to put a luggage area into the Floyd Testarossa. And believe it or not, <laughs> this is one of the largest uh, uh, storage compartments here for luggage of any Ferrari um, uh, of the 1980s, especially, and even going into the 1990s. <laughs> it's almost as big as a as a uh, the trunk of a, uh, a, a Jaguar. Um, you know, where you store like, dead bodies and things, because, you know, bad guys have Jaguars, you know. But anyway, a super huge uh, storage area, which is very unusual for a Ferrari, especially a Ferrari in the 1980s. I love it. So let me sit in this wonderful car, this dream that I've ever had. I've never been in one before. So let's see how this works. Let's see how I can get in this. And let's explore the interior of this wonderful car. First thing I notice is very low to the ground and I am getting older, but anyway, I think I can make it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Oh. So here I am in a Ferrari Testarossa, a dream come true. Thank you, Rory. And uh, the first thing I notice is that the car just wraps around you. Uh, you kind of feel the seats, the boosters here, just fit your bum nicely. You know, everything wraps around you. Everything is at arm's distance. Uh, I don't think this is a car designed for slightly larger people. It's designed for small Italians and maybe mid-sized English people. That's me. So one thing I noticed straight away as soon as I got into the car, were these seat belts, which were very 1980s. In fact, my father's Maxima, Nissan Maxima had these. And they were kind of for the people that would forget to put the seat belts on, you know, because they think, oh, you know, you're too stupid. You've really got a memory to put your seat belt on, you know. So they would actually do it for you. So what you do is you actually close the door here, like this, and you turn the key, like this. Whoa, whoa, there it is. There it goes. And so, look, so, oh, I remember to put my seat belt on. But no, not really, because it, you still have to put the manual lap bar on here too, right, right here. So it's not all automatic because I don't think they can get it to automatically go like this and straight into the hole. But anyway, super cool. I actually love these. It's something from the 1980s that you only see in the 1980s. And I think it's great. Another thing I noticed on this car is that a lot of the Ferraris at the time, in the 1980s, they actually shared some parts. And uh, the steering wheel here is the exact same steering wheel, a few little modifications, but almost exact steering wheel as the one found in the 308, the Ferrari 308, which shared some of the same production time. They kind of overlapped a little bit, but the same three spoke steering wheel with the horn in the middle. 
And is it the same sounding horn? Yes, it's exactly the same horn as a 308. I love, I love that sound. Oh, so it's just so Ferrari, isn't it? And then also, we have this wonderful gated shifter, which is exactly the same as the 308 too. Once again, Ferrari is sharing parts between their cars of the same time period. And I love the gated shifters. And uh, the knob, it just feels great in your hand, this does. And um, gated shifters are just so Formula One, so race car-like. And then that goes to uh, uh, the same thing that Enzo Ferrari was wanting. He wanted, like I said, a race car on the road. And that's why he kind of got the gated shifters. It shifts like a real race car, Formula One race car. Pretty darn cool. So one thing I like about the Ferrari Testarossa is I love how simple the instrument panel is. You've got the speedometer on the left, the tachometer on the right, you've got the oil on the top, and then you've got the temperature gauge on the bottom, and that's all you got. It's not complicated, it's easy to understand. So in the center console, which I think is a beautiful design right here, what we've got is we've got, once again, we've got the oil gauge and temperature gauge here, and then we've got how much fuel you've got here. So the fuel is not in the center console. The fuel is actually in the center console right here. And this is your fuel gauge in the center console. And then what else is in the center console is all your air conditioning gauges, your mirror, your hazard lights, your power windows, and believe it or not, and this is a little fact here, these dials right here are actually from a Ford Mondeo. Yeah, Ford Mondeo parts in the Ferrari. But Ferrari tend to do that sometimes. Some of these supercars tend to do that. So the glove box in the Ferrari Testarossa, I absolutely love the glove box. It's kind of James Bond-like. And uh, this button down here, when I press this, we're gonna look at this, it's gonna open up. There we go, and then I'm gonna pull it here, and look at this mirror. Isn't that fantastic? It's got like the biggest mirror you've ever seen. So if you've got a passenger in the seat, a lovely lady in the seat, and she wants to do her makeup, she can do it right here, put all her makeup in here, and then she can make sure she looks good and everything, look beautiful in a beautiful car. Absolutely love the glove box, fantastic. So another thing is, is on this car, it's got such clean lines on the interior. They didn't want to mess it up with a cassette deck because they had cassettes at the time. They didn't have CDs, no, no CDs. They didn't have eight tracks either, so they had cassettes. And uh, where did they keep that? Well, they actually kept that hidden in this area right here. This is actually where the cassette player is. And what you have to do is lift this up here and then here's your cassette player. Now this particular one has been replaced by an Alpine CD uh, player um, but um, it's wonderful that it's all hidden and it's all concealed within this door here look at this this is absolutely fantastic therefore nobody nobody therefore nobody can steal your radio because it's hidden another great thing that Ferrari did
get to drive the Ferrari Testarossa. How awesome is that? Let's go! So here I am driving uh, Roy's uh, Ferrari Testarossa. What a joy this is going to be, I can't wait. Uh, let's try some revs. Just, can you hear the engine already inside the cabin? Oh, that's, that's just plays my tune right there. So okay, let's take a ride in this. So here we go. This is a gated shifter. Put it into the gear. And then off we go. Here we go. right here and going through these country roads even in this rain what an experience absolutely love it but it just hugs the road you have one with this car oh fantastic absolutely fantastic much power on this thing and the steering is just so tight just so tight I mean it's, it's no, not power steering it's uh, definitely manual but you can feel everything on the road so you become at one with the road it's just absolutely fantastic experience this it drives just as good as what I thought this car would drive uh, if not even better dark day we've got this little bit of sunshine here with this car still absolutely lovely absolutely lovely through this uh, mirror right here, this uh, rear view mirror. Unlike other cars of the time, like the Countach, uh, the Countach does not have good visibility. This has great rear visibility. myself out of this car is I absolutely that was amazing driving Rory's Ferrari Testarossa special thanks to Rory for letting me drive this car this is definitely probably one of the best cars I've ever drove I mean it just wraps around you you have one with the machine I mean you just don't get modern cars like this today it might go slower but that's okay it still, it was the fastest car back in the 80s. And then, oh wait, hold on, the key's buzzing. Oh, let me get the key out. There we go. Oh, oh, and the keys, I noticed, it was rubbing against my, uh, my leg. And Ferrari actually, I just noticed this, they actually made the key bend here, so it doesn't rub against your leg. They actually accidentally knocked the key and noticed that this key right here, Bends so it doesn't hit your knee when you're driving. Hey, that's pretty cool, isn't it? But 
my gosh, what a great experience this was. And uh, uh, maybe we'll take this out again when it's a little bit of a sunshine here, but um, I'm just blown away. Uh, I give this car a four two thumbs up and uh, best driving experience ever. Just amazing, fantastic. So one thing I noticed when I got into the car were these seat belts, which travel along the body post, the upper body post here when you get in. So when I shut this door, like this, I'll adjust my hat, you might. It's gotta be, you got the key, the ignition has to be on. Oh, it does, okay, yeah. okay, all right, let's try again, okay. <laughs>